was suffering with a mental disorder, depression. But Rick Warren in 2000, at the one year anniversary of this, had a meeting at his church as he's having every year, made a particular comment. He said, there are two types of people, those who need recovery and know it, and those who need recovery and don't. There's the assumption that everybody's got a mental disability. Mm. Okay, let's define what they mean by mental health, though, well, John. Th that's the question. They, they it don't is define not that. Your definition and my definition are what Jim or the others out there that are watching us. It's not what you think it is. Well, the mental health that they're talking about okay, is, is being recast. Now, listen to this. Into aligning one's personality and behavior to politically... Mm. And oh, correct norms. That is right. Norms which are rapidly changing as society's Christian base erodes. <clears throat> the mental health that they're talking about is our old fashioned, our biblical opinions and beliefs. Listen, attitudes, mm -hmm. values. Jesus have mercy. We, on this panel, That's would be considered Today a mental case. We have mental problems. The 22nd if of April, they cannot, through common core, and John, That's I want to keep tying this together, the church and the school. Oh, it's coming down hard, too. Educating our kids out there. And our teachers are being educated to teach this. And they really don't know what they're teaching. But we would be considered unhealthy. Hmm. We would have mental problems. Yes. So therefore, the school for our little children that we're teaching to love the Lord Jesus Christ, their attitude, their thinking, their morals have to be changed. And I want to add up to the third component in Go this, ahead. John. Go ahead. It's the homosexuality agenda yes, That's right. that is going. That's it right. is the wrecking ball that is being used in the school and in the churches and it is to long. demolition for demolition, in other words, yes, for demolition of our values, yes. our morals. Think about what I'm saying. Yes. And uh, I'm like John. This all starts now to c kind of making sense what we're watching. Right. And uh, John, you want to say something? I yeah, can tell. Yeah, I'm going to go to a break, but I'm going to go back to 1965. Back in '65, the Department of Health and Education was commissioned. But the commission at Michigan State University to write a report. This is 1965, called Behavioral Science Teacher Education Program, called BSTEP. Many teachers are familiar with this. It was designed not only to change our children's values, attitudes, and beliefs, but with far more malevolence. It was also a program that was to also create. It all started in the 60s. Our nation. To create a I mean, I know in the 40s that and that so Hollywood, but I mean. It, it all started in the orders. 60s, Shauna. I'm but telling you what. A foundation because this is something Get him out. What is he doing? That's exactly and right. Commitedly, while that was Still. taking place in the 70s, Ish. the church began to become involved in these small groups, which are something that came out of communism, this sensitivity-type training stuff. And it was designed for remediation to change the behavioral mindsets of people and use it in a group setting. So while it's being used in the schools, Let's use it in the church and start reforming the way people think and transforming them into being these, I'll just use the term that I read you said, saw in these reports, slaves to this new system they want to right. bring out. Let me say this quickly. we got to go take a break. But Rick Warren's Daniel plan, because we're going to switch back and forth between the political, the educational, and the church back and forth because it's all one big plan together. But the, he said, Dr. Hyman stated, that the key to the success of the Daniel plan was group living. Individuals mm -hmm. will not succeed. Our only hope lies in community. Mm -hmm. Hence, the building of these big buildings, right, right, apartment buildings, right. and squashing us in all together and taking our cars away from us and our money away from us, and we're working for the state. We're robots, in other words. We can't right. think for ourselves because we've been conditioned to not think for ourselves, to only accept, accept the idea of community. I hope that this is the 
beginning to make some sense to you. John and I are working hard to explain it to you. If you don't understand it, email us. Uh, but we're going to take a quick look. America itself as the... Yeah, Brown wants to say something. On air at jsm.org. Okay, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to make a quick statement, and then Brother Carl Brown wants to say something. Well, I'll let you make your statement first, Brother okay. Brown. Go ahead. This is why I think we all know and understand there's a dumbing down of America that's going on. And I believe that this dumbing down of America has begun in the church. The church began to dumb down, which opens up for America itself as the people to begin to dumb down and to believe and accept everything that calls itself in name only as Christians. I want to make sure that people understand that this absolute foolish stuff that we're hearing here, preachers and the church are responsible, ultimately, for this stuff being allowed to come in the way that it is. It, as you said, as you so brought forth, this has not just now started. It's been some times ago. And when was the last time we hear the <coughs> church stand up and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ boldly without fear of contradiction or compromise? The only ministry that I'm aware of, and I'm sure that many others that are not uh, nationally televised <coughs> that are preaching, but for the most part over national television, there's not very many churches, if any at all, standing up and proclaiming the gospel saying, Thus said the Lord. the Lord. And so there's a dumbing down going on in Christianity. And, and I, I, I find it very difficult to believe that Christians can follow this foolishness unless they are dumbed down first. And well, that starts they have with been. the church. Exactly. They have been. You go into these churches right now. Well, Carl, you weren't here. But John and, and uh, Jim was here Sunday. Donnie played a clip. It was a clip. I was trying to find that this morning. Right. And of, of, of a young minister, I say young, I, I really don't know what age he is, but he specifically told the people he was a change agent, which is terminology Rick Warren wow, uses, yeah, that he was a change agent, and he was rebuking and chastising our older ministers that believed like we believe in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, preaching of the gospel and the teaching of salvation. You know, he said we were behind the times, and he boastful, he boasted of the <coughs> fact that he was a change agent. Of course, when I looked him up, because I wasn't aware, he was one of Rick Warren's top ministers wow. over the whole United States of America. But before, we've got another part of this we have desperately got to get into, but, but before I do that, Many of you have heard us mention from time to time, John, myself, the panel, this leadership network, which it will shock you when you look at it and see the number of preachers that are involved in it, is it is the premier organization committed, now listen to what I'm saying, it's committed to peddling psychological, social transformation in the church. Exactly what you saw in that tape that we played Sunday morning. And um, it was brought in by Peter Drucker and Bob Buford. And we discussed them many, many times on this program. And, um, but it's a, what they call three-legged three stool. All right, but it's to train pastors and leaders in the state-of-the-art methods of marketing right. and social change. That's the mission of these churches right. nowadays. It's not the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, they use scripture for some trans from some translation of the Bible that is so far out many times you can't find exactly what it's even talking about. They'll use some scripture, they'll use the name of Jesus, they'll use the names of Moses, uh, the disciples, so forth and so on, to make you think what they're teaching That's and right. preaching is from the Word of God, but it's really a marketing technique hmm. to get people into the church. Hence, you don't talk about anymore about sin. Oh, that's a bad word. That'll make people feel bad. 
You don't talk about their sins. You build them up. Make them feel <coughs> good about themselves because they'll come back to the church. And they'll pay tithes. They'll give. You'll have a big church. You'll have a very rich financial flow of money coming into you. You'll be someone important in the community. You've got to do away with all this blood stuff. You've got wow. to do away with preaching of sin and those type of things because the crowds won't come. That's the only true part about the whole thing. I just said, it's right, they won't come. But John, we've got to get to another part of this. I have so much I want to say here. Well, it all ties in because the Leadership Network has two components. When it was originally, when it was originally started, it was the Peter Drucker Foundation. Bob Buford was the head of this. He's written a book, and of course, someone gave him advertising, but boasts of how he was converted to Christ as an atheist. But anyway, from an atheist, <laughs> by an atheist, I should say. Rick Warren made all his leaders in his church read that book. But Bob Buford's brand of Christianity is not true biblical Christianity. But two components of the leadership network, one to the church, which is what Buford runs, and it is to be the 21st century paradigm change agent for pastors to help them conform to the new direction that the church is going. So their whole mission is to change the church through works, not creeds. Then you have the other side, which is on the business world, which was led by Francis Hasselbein, who formerly was the head of the Girl Scouts of America. A lot of people innocently have their kids in Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and there probably are some good things about those, but the direction these leaders want to take these organizations is to change the value That's system right. that they used to have. That's right. So are they the quality that they were many years ago? I suspect not, but I'll leave that alone. I haven't looked at it lately. But the concern I have for the educational system, because you've got something that will affect even homeschoolers. That's exactly this right. This common and core. Christian schools. And Christian schools, too. And, and let me just take five minutes to lay a little history down. You know the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which took place back in the 60s. It was put on steroids with the No Child Left Behind. And these programs were designed to once again create a paradigm change in the educational process. For time, I can't go into great detail, but all of these things moved kids towards remediation behavior more than academics. Children today, in my estimation, and I know this in the business world, having young people come into the business world and assessing their level of knowledge compared now to what it was years ago, they are less intelligent today than they were years ago. Sure. Academically, they're I'll just use the word stupid in comparison to what they learned before. I left my college education because I did not feel the quality of information I was receiving was sufficient for me in the workforce. So like a few, I chose to go the route of self-study, self-development, and fortunately with the Lord's guidance and help, it enabled me to enter a very lucrative and successful business career. At the same time, I attempted to look at seminary. I was in Pittsburgh, and I went to a particular popular seminary there and found that it was until even the third year before they even cracked open the Bible. And all you learned preceding that wow. was psychology. Wow. Now, I wasn't interested in a psychology degree. I wasn't interested in anything that Freud, Jung, or Maslow, or any fool would have to say. I wanted to know what thus saith the Lord. Yes. So the Lord said, I will teach you in the admonitions the ways of God. And then he introduced me, the Lord did to the ministry here. And I began to read the things your husband wrote and began to read the Word of God and began to develop and grow. And the Lord greatly blessed me and gave me a hunger and an ability to read. So I found myself coming from an ability Amen to read to maybe a few pages of a book before I got bored to where I could sit down now and read a 300-page book in an hour because the Lord can do things that man Amen. can't do for That's you. Right. Amen. Anyway, getting back to my point, I just wanted to share that little testimony of thought. Representative Tim Murphy in Pennsylvania, I just had a pastor tell me he was in a meeting with him and felt very highly of this fella. But after I did some homework, I found that he's looking to introduce this H.R. 3717 bill that provides the impetus to clear the pathway for H.R. 5, which is a Senate reauthorization to implement a system for schools to hire and contact mental health practitioners. So now we're going to put our kids under the subject of mental health practitioners, but here's the catch. They basically are deeming that everybody has a disability. That's exactly Everybody's right. got a mental disability. That's so we right. don't rule anybody out because, like you said, 
this Title I money that's coming into the educational system, if the schools subscribe to it, and if every child is considered disabled, a lot of money now is going to be supplied by the states to help bring this new attitudinal change that's to take place. And they're calling these kids at-risk children. So this Individuals with Disability Act are now also, with all the kids going to be part of this idea, which, by the way, is this Individuals with Disability Education Act. So the idea is everybody's disabled, so everybody now has to be monitored and looked at, and everybody has to be assessed and determined if how they're following the new common core outcomes. So I'm trying to, I'm cutting through a lot of detail to explain yes, this very are, simply. See, what they're really saying is causing the mental problem and where it is. But when they screen you, this mental health screening, they want to eradicate right and wrong. Absolutely. In fact, I'm there's no absolute. Right. There is no right and there is no wrong. That's what they, John, that's what the right. change is. It's right. a B-step program going back to 1965 and detailing and curling in this, on, in fact, from the PDF on page 255, it says this. The Protestant ethic will atrophy as more and more enjoy varied leisure and guaranteed sustenance. Now, what's guaranteed sustenance? It's entitlements. So we're going to try to prepare our kids to become recipients of entitlements. That was, again, we're rushing on the very per peripheral areas of this. But if we now put all these kids at common, in the common core system at risk for mental health, what, what are they assessing to be the problem? Well, for not meeting the common core attitudes, values, beliefs, and dispositions. So they now have these proficiency scores that these outsiders are going to come in and say, here's the problem with this little Johnny boy here. He's not conforming to the common core. And as you said, the homosexual agenda is a great tool to assess how broken down the value system is in little Johnny or Susie, so we can determine how much more we need to remediate their thought process, to become more open-minded, to become more socially acceptable as far as others that are considered different. So there's going to be a processing and conditioning of students to become whatever the government standards are, standards are for mandating scoring and proficiency levels, and that's what these tests are about. They, they train them for the tests. Because the right. teachers and the students are judged on the tests. So you have several of these individuals, like uh, these representatives, Klein, Murphy, Alexander, and Murray, uh, are all part of this effort to enable this to become about where Title I funding can come in right. to pass these bills to make it possible that psychological and psychiatric techniques will be employed. As they say, they, th this process claims to change the student's psyche and personality to government qualities, and these interventions are included in both bills. Evil. They're going to try to change the way people think. Well, the Bible says that the Lord will change the way we think. He said um, that we're not to be conformed to this, to this world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of our mind to prove it is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Says that in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. So this being the case, Miss Francis, there is an attack against the church because those like Rick Warren are on the three-legged stool bringing it in through the church. The school system is bringing it in from the government perspective. Right. And because every child will be labeled as a disabled child, all children now, whether you be in a parochial school, a Christian school, whether you be homeschooled, are included in this new standards definition. And here's the beautiful thing. Because of the way it's coming in under the guise of the government, and, and again, for time's sake, I won't go into the particulars, certain laws uh, protect individual families from certain things in the public schools or in their private settings. But this will supersede that because it will now make it possible for the federal government to determine how your child's progressing in these standards so that they will need to know personal information about your kids in order to make those assessments. So all kids will be identified, it claims, as at risk, which is allows the children or the government to access to all children under the Common Core curriculum teaching. This stuff is almost comparable to what Adolf 
Hitler instituted. Well, it is. In, in, in Germany, I <laughs> it's think. It's not almost. It is, John. Let me quickly add something to what you're saying. What they are really saying is that our children and the adults has got to be conformed to the way the government wants, wants us to, to think. think. That's right. And one other thing, the church through Rick Warren is being transformed, but the government is working through Rick Warren because that's where all of his ideas are coming from, to transform the church right. into the way. Now, if you read and study any of this, they'll tell you very quickly, this change and this transformation cannot take place unless the church is changed That's and it. the emphasis is off of the Holy Bible, right. the Word of God, preachers preaching the gospel from behind the pulpit. That concept is not really a concept, it's the truth. And uh, it reminds me, John, of, of the scripture, and I, I think I'm to use this this morning. I mean, Sunday morning in church, Jeremiah 2 and 13. Okay. Jeremiah 2 and 13, for my people have committed two evils. That's it. They have forsaken the fountain of living water, right. the gospel of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, and has hewed out, hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, That's right. in fact. In other words, this whole uh, system that the government is trying to promote is broken that can hold no water. Um, when you trace this all back, it is government, it is the church, That's right. it, and it's business. Yeah, yeah the right. marketing of the gospel is big business. Yeah. Yes, it is. And they're all three working together so that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ cannot and will not be preached to the masses of the people because we have all got to think just alike. We've got to all realize that the government is our source of help. There's no other help that comes from the government. And when we as a Christian hear that, we say, oh, no, that's not true. Our help comes from above. Amen. That's right. And that's what that's right. they've got to shut up, and that's what they've got to silence. That's right. You know, the National Education Association has a manual to train educators for the teachers that they can understand better this mental health disabilities in this program called IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. And in the curriculum or in their teachings, it's all purpose to change attitudes, values, beliefs, and dispositions. Now, that doesn't sound to me like academic education. It is that not. sounds like behavioral modification. That's exactly and what it is. And when you look at all these programs, that's all what they're designed to do. Here's another scripture when you brought up what you just said a moment ago pertaining to this age. It's in 2 Peter chapter 2, so I'll start in verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery, and that word there is not used so much just as sexual adultery. It has to do with the going to something else aside from the Lord, spiritual, spiritual adultery. adultery and cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. That's right. The pulpit today has wavering souls. Preachers Amen. do not know what to stand for because they don't stand That's for right. anything. You know, if we ask anything with a double, double, um, if we're double-minded, uh, we're not going to be able to stand. And a heart have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, Peter says, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, Listen to this. Following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosur, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, he was seeking a way that he could curse God's kids so he could make profit That's out of right. it. But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. But here's what I wanted to say, hitchhiking on what you said about in Jeremiah. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom in the midst of darkness is reserved forever. They just blow with the wind. Whatever you tell them to do, that's what they're going to do. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. They promise, while they promise themselves liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption for whom a man is overcome for the same 
is he brought in bondage. They talk about liberty. They talk about deliverance. Right. They talk about the help they get from Celebrate Recovery. Right. All that, ladies and gentlemen, is a lie from the pit of hell. That's right. You don't have to celebrate recovery. We can rejoice in deliverance. Because 2,000 years <laughs> ago at the cross, Jesus Christ died for the drunk. He died for the homosexual. Amen. And you can be delivered from that sin and not have it bother you That's anymore. Right. That's the power of God, which they deny. Yes. Another Amen. scripture real quick. I quoted it a few seconds ago. I want to read it carefully. Romans 12. These first three verses are very important for the church. Yes, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world. We're not to conform to this world. Amen. I say it all the time. We're not to conform to psychology. The people don't want to read to what I write. To the ways of sinful man. Man's reasonings, philosophy, which is all that garbage is washed into a blender and has come out today in modern modernity, is what the modern church is teaching. But he says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit working in Amen. you, can for transforming you. Paul, right. Paul said it in another way in Romans chapter um, uh, chapter. Um, find the scripture I was looking for real quick. No, in Ephesians chapter 2. Let me go there real quick. I want to give you scriptures because some of you sometimes say, where is it in the Bible? Paul says this in verse 10 of second, uh, uh, the second chapter of Ephesians. For we are his workmanship. We can't do it. We're his workmanship. Amen. He does it. Created in Christ Jesus. He creates in us. We believe he creates in us. We're his workmanship, meaning we're his masterpiece. In Christ Jesus, unto good works. If you want to do a good work, you let the Holy Spirit work in you, and then as you then have the work of the Holy Spirit working in you, He will then, as a result of that, you will produce and bring forth good works. Amen. That's the Word of God. Can I interject the Sister Swagger scripture that the Apostle Paul said to the church at Corinth that is very viable to what John just said about the power of God? In 2 Corinthians, we're all familiar with it. Second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Christ, Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but the power oh, of God. Oh, this man. foolishness is the wisdom of men. The power of God and is what delivers. And it's foolishness, people. and it will bring, dis That's bring exactly destruction right. That's upon right. this country and upon us personally. Jim, you want to say? Uh, scriptures in the, uh, back to Ephesians again. We're in the fourth chapter where it talks about Jesus' resurrection. Right. And uh, he, he, he led captivity. Captivity gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. And it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro That's and right. carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sweat of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's right. That's exactly That's what right. That's exactly right. That's to exactly deceive. And let me, I'm going to use this scripture, and then we're going to have to take a quick break, which I hate to do at this point, but I want to go to Second Corinthians 4. And again, I want this scripture put on the screen from the Expositor Study Bible because I want the, you to see what the notes say. It's going to exactly state what is happening and what we have been discussing on this program today. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning with verse 2. If we could quickly oh, yes. um, put that on the screen. Mm -hmm. It said, but have renounced the hidden thing mm -hmm. of dishonesty. Of dishonesty. What is being fostered on the church today, the common core that's being taught Amen. to our children, Amen. is dishonest. That's right. It is not honest. That's right. And if you look at it, it said all gospel, this is the notes from the Exposure Study Bible, all gospel outside of the cross is dishonest. Amen. Because that's it's right. untrue. Think about, think about right. what we're saying. Not walking in craftiness. What's craftiness? 
It's being deceiving. That's what right. Jim That's said. It's deceiving. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and it and the exposure said to do holy deeds in an unholy way. All your good deeds out there feeding them hungry and cleaning That's their right. yards on, and mowing man. their yards. Doing good deeds in an unholy way or unholy deeds in a supposedly holy way. That's what that means. That's exactly what the church That's is doing exactly today. Right. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Refute refers to using it for one's own purpose and agenda. That's if right. this the gospel that's being preached today, if it's not being used for man's own purpose and agenda, for the government's own purpose and agenda, I don't know what is being used today. But by the manifestation of the truth, which is preaching the cross, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, if these Corinthians will only listen to their own conscience, mm. They will know that Paul's message is true. Amen. If the church, Amen. if the church That's today right. will listen with their consciousness, they'll know the message Amen. that is being preached through Sunlight Broadcasting Praise is true. Go to, I'm going to go to verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, hmm. in other words, we don't preach Christ and him crucified, it is hid to them who are lost. And the uh, expositor said that they're lost because they will not accept the message of the cross. That's Man, right. you talk about some powerful scripture yes, we have given here today. And we got to go to a break. Yes. I apologize. Everybody's wanting to say something. I won't say more. <laughs> but we got to take, unfortunately, we live in a real world <laughs> that says we got to take a break. So we'll be right back after the break.